my great uh, pleasure and my great honor to talk in this symposium. And uh, following uh, President Noren, President uh, Junior's uh, talk, and I'm going to follow uh, uh, the HPV transmission, but I'm also uh, going to briefly talk about our previous works uh, exploring genetic disease. Uh, these, both of these two fields are diseases that transmission from generation to generations. So as um, previous uh, Professor Liu have talked, that uh, everybody knows our previous test, um, uh, moving from Taiwan's highly prevalent uh, HPV condition to low prevalent condition. And uh, the first uh, most important is neonatal HPV vaccinations plus HBIG at birth. So in our previous uh, era, uh, familiar aggregation of HPV and even HCV is so common that our surgeons are so capable of developing techniques in uh, uh, surgery for HCC. And uh, if the mother is E antigen positive, 90% of the children would get chronic HPV infection and mostly for lifelong. So the most important uh, issue is the age of infection. Before age of infection, uh, before age of one, 90% will become chronic carriers. So fortunately, we have known that the transmission occurs around uh, the perinatal uh, area uh, period, so that after birth, if we get the vaccines and HBIG, uh, we still are able to prevent uh, the transmission. And the other uh, earlier intrauterine or later postnatal infection are uh, much less. So since the development of vaccines in the early 1980s, the uh, universal neonatal immunization has been uh, recommended, uh, and now uh, most uh, more than 190 per, uh, countries in the world have adapted uh, universal vaccinations. And uh, in some low endemic uh, areas, uh, initially they got uh, the risk group uh, immunization uh, first by screening uh, mothers and then give uh, the vaccines. But these uh, have been uh, adapted to universal. Like in Japan, since uh, 2016, they have changed to universal uh, immunization. So most of the countries get uh, universal immunization, but with countries capable of pregnant women screening, uh, they are able to give HBIG to high-risk uh, infants. However, HBIG uh, costs much higher, so that in Taiwan, previously we have uh, screened both uh, S and E energy, and we save a lot of costs for HBIG, but still very highly uh, successful in preventing children with infection. And then, uh, because of the uh, resources are uh, available and the infection population decrease, uh, since uh, 2019, Taiwan have uh, uh, given uh, changed the policy, given HBIG to uh, children born to um, mothers with surface antigen. Uh, but we still uh, retain the screening for E antigen uh, for identifying high risk mothers. So now our new standard of care is to uh, screen mothers with surface and E antigen and then uh, for uh, high viral load uh, and then mother, ma mothers with antiviral prophylaxis and neonatal vaccination and uh, lastly very important to test the children's serology at one year uh, of age. So uh, you have seen this picture so that I will skip. So that we have found that uh, vaccination not only decrease the uh, surface antigen rate, but also uh, de uh, decrease the, uh, 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 reduce the horizontal uh, infection. And previously, uh, in the old study, have shown the decrease of Q fulminant hepatitis. And Professor Mei Hui Zhang have shown in uh, many uh, very important uh, studies uh, showing the reduction of HCC. And this is our recent um, uh, survey uh, by CDC, uh, by Dr. Suweru, uh, showing that we have uh, in the pregnant national registry per, for pregnant women, the surface antigen and the uh, E antigen has largely decreased. 
to 0.4% uh, for E antigen. However, our neighboring countries, they, they have much later implementation of the uh, universal vaccination. So many foreign-born mothers still have high prevalence of service antigen. Um, however, not everything is peace and happy after this successful program. Uh, this is uh, my uh, recent clinic that uh, one tw young uh, lady was pregnancy and uh, referred from the OBS doctor and uh, she has a uh, relatively normal LT and high viral load. This looks like uh, she is a usual case for uh, antiviral therapy in pregnancy. So we are going to prescribe the medication. However, when we do further tests, we found this woman already got cirrhosis. And then um, the vaccination history in uh, infant is um, on schedule. And her mother and brother also had a HPV infection and both have history of severe uh, ALT elevations and mothers on antiviral therapy. So uh, this is quite an unexpected situation for both for patients and also for physicians. So we now know that even with very good implementation and a very good execution of this vaccination, some children still got infected. And we have shown the higher viral load uh, to cause a higher risk of uh, children with infection. We have also shown that quantitative surface antigen level also correlate with uh, uh, chance of infection. And this has also been adapted by ESO as one of the criteria for antiviral in pregnancy. And uh, I, uh, this is our first study published in uh, 2015 uh, using TDF uh, decreasing maternal viral load and then decreasing the infant uh, infection rate and now have plenty of important data so that uh, most of the guidelines have adopted this antiviral therapy for pregnant women. And we have also recently shown the uh, lesser uh, decline of quantitative surface antibody levels in these uh, mothers. And however, not all the infant uh, was uh, prevented, just a very small number uh, still got infected. However, it has uh, prevented more than 90% of the chance of this high viral mother group, uh, risk group. And uh, the, we have also shown that neonatal HPV DNA positivity is uh, predictive of children's chronic HPV infection, uh, most reliably tested at one year of age. So uh, the major society guidelines and WHO since 2020 have uh, recommended using TDF in preventing mother to ch child transmission since uh, the uh, third or second trimester and to stop at uh, one month or after delivery uh, and with maternal monitoring of ALT. So uh, when concerning about the long-term safety of children and mothers, we have done a follow-up study uh, up to seven years and have shown that normal growth and also bone growth for children. So this therapy strategy is quite safe for mothers and infants. Recently, uh, more data from China have shown the TAF uh, to reduce uh, maternal HPV transmission so that we have also done uh, continue our uh, uh, clinical trial and uh, as expected the viral load reduction is uh, almost identical to DD TDF and the uh, uh, preventive efficacy is similar with TDF. And many mothers uh, experience ALT elevation postpartum even without antiviral therapy. It's just like nobody monitor these mothers. So we have used machine learning uh, of uh, 300 mothers and have shown that 87% of mothers have very stable or minimally elevated LT uh, before and after pattern. And uh, like uh, um, about 30% of mothers have a moderate or uh, uh, severe uh, peripatin LT flare. So we think these mothers may need a restart or continuation extension of treatment. So uh, we should emphasize that when we treat mothers with short term to treat, prevent mother to infant transmission, we should closely monitor LT as like as the guideline need to uh, 
monitor at least for six months after uh, the delivery. So the monitoring system is uh, very important to discuss with mother whether they need to extend the treatment or not. So the complete uh, HPV uh, prevention from mother uh, to child transmission is to start before birth uh, when the mother's uh, pregnancy to uh, make sure they got good screening and to select uh, some population for prophylaxis and then uh, timely vaccination and very importantly the last step of surveillance and to treat children when indicated. Uh, most of the children need uh, lifelong uh, uh, monitoring and the follow up. So these uh, children may uh, grow into adult and grow into the care of uh, uh, the adult hematologist. So uh, the next uh, part of my story is uh, also a transmission of diseases, but it's genetic diseases. These are three uh, uh, real families. Uh, they uh, got, uh, uh, we know Taiwan, most of the children, uh, family have small family of one or two children. But these uh, families, both of their children are affected and uh, started to have chronic liver disease that is life threatening or either need to receive uh, uh, liver transplantation. So uh, these are, every uh, presentation is different. So we start with the first case is. Uh, um, the old case, and uh, this is a notebook by Professor Mei Hui Zhang. Uh, she recorded very carefully every difficult cases, and uh, uh, we need to uh, try to figure it out. So these are the early uh, publication we uh, want to test for MDR3 defect, uh, but uh, we only detected a little a small portion of patient with high gamma GT to have anti R3 mutation. And then we did, uh, we did more uh, genetic tests as in the past 20 years there has been a large uh, progress. So recently we have found these uh, uh, zinc finger, uh, 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 very difficult to pronounce, uh, gene, uh, this family to have this mutation and also being reported in other countries to cause liver cirrhosis. And actually, the uh, sibling, one of the sibling, have grown into adult to 30 years, and she still uh, can have the disease, need uh, regular follow up and uh, medical care. So since uh, 1998, uh, many important gene uh, has been found uh, by Professor Richard Thompson <laughs> on the seat and uh, the group, and the many scientists have. Uh, uh, have a breakthrough uh, findings of genetic liver diseases. And in Taiwan, we started to do uh, with, uh, 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 along with the progress of the medic, uh, genetic uh, techniques, we have uh, used different uh, methodologies to identify different genetic disorders. And recently, we have developed uh, the panel for NGS for detecting genetic liver diseases and also combined with the whole exome sequences. And uh, um, there has been many uh, good reviews on uh, the uh, complex uh, biometabolism and the bioflow. And many of the proteins have uh, defect, genetic defect, have different kinds of genetic diseases. But many would uh, result in cholestasis. Um, however, not only children and neonates would have these genetic diseases. Uh, uh, children and adults uh, with idiopathic liver disease, mild or uh, severe or needing transplantation, may also have genetic disorders. Uh, especially among the large population of jaundice infants, many may, a small number may have very severe diseases. So this is quite a very challenging test to diagnose. So uh, the recent development of next generation sequence we use the panel to detect some of the common, more common in the rare diseases. Okay, so uh, this enables us to uh, more efficiently to detect the genetic disorder. And these families have two affected children, and uh, but not uh, negative with the uh, NGS panel. So then we uh, apply the whole exome sequence in the whole family and find the uh, platin. Uh, mutation possibly associated uh, with uh, 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 cholestasis, which is a cytoskeleton uh, linkage uh, uh, protein. 
So we have combined several different uh, methods to uh, undergo genetic analysis and uh, to identify the uh, some uh, genetic defect recur in different families, but many of the more rare diseases only occur in one family or two. So uh, the test is still ongoing. Um, recently, we have a, a consortium in Asia Pacific countries to collect the uh, genetic diagnosis data in the uh, patients and found the more prevalent disease in, in this area, which is quite different uh, uh, with um, from uh, Western countries in uh, states or in Europe. And so the top uh, uh, in, on the list is the SOC 25A313, which is uh, NICCD, C train deficiency. The disease is quite interesting because it may manifest neonatal cholestasis, but also in the adult uh, manifest as neuropsychiatric uh, symptoms. And in the middle, maybe a symptomatic or failure to thrive. So recently, uh, the Epstein uh, experts uh, team have uh, published a, a, a review for uh, this uh, specific disease. So some of the uh, diseases might be treatable and change the uh, fate of the patient. Like this patient uh, before uh, already uh, uh, depending uh, liver uh, failure and need transplantation, but when they uh, got the right treatment, the liver function normalized and uh, no need for transplantation. And interestingly, uh, this rare disease uh, in our uh, um, country, we have uh, different uh, families with the same mutations, homo homozygous mutations, so we suspect this might be more common than we think. And we also found the Dubin Johnson syndrome, uh, previous known as uh, adult disease, but it may present as neonatal cholestasis and then uh, subside and recur in the young adult. So uh, people might uh, ask why uh, to do genetic tests, what uh, does that uh, matter? So it matters with the uh, uh, further treatment and the management, uh, such like a bilirubin diversion surgery uh, has been applied to improve uh, genetic uh, liver diseases such as PFIC and allergic, and this can be uh, uh, done after uh, correct genetic diagnosis. And also pharmacotherapies also need uh, the uh, right diagnosis uh, to proceed. And uh, in tomorrow's talk, uh, Professor Thompson will uh, introduce a uh, uh, newly uh, developed drug, the IBAT inhibitor in treating PFIC patients, uh, which uh, is a ground, uh, break, uh, groundbreaking of discoveries of, of for cholestatic diseases. And not only to uh, guide for uh, diseases, it is very hard to determine a child uh, not going to liver transplantation, but uh, in this child, uh, we decided not to receive transplant because of the uh, pre prognosis prediction and then transfer to um, palliative care. Uh, this is a picture of the last day of the child's life. Uh, they, the whole family uh, uh, with the child have a very peaceful uh, in a vacation uh, resort. Okay. Lastly, I would like to thank my mentor, Professor Mei Hui Zhang and uh, Professor Nian Xuan and uh, all the, uh, our colleagues uh, in our pediatric GI team. And this is a precious uh, photo uh, taken with Professor Palmer Beasley and uh, our uh, Dean uh, uh, Chen Jianren Yuan Zhang and uh, also uh, Zheng Yongming Yi Shi. Okay, so uh, many uh, our uh, Precious mentors have guided us to go uh, into these uh, discoveries. And I need to thank the uh, big group of uh, the uh, prevention of maternal to infant transmission group of HBB. Uh, many of uh, our adult hepatologist colleagues helped uh, these projects, and uh, our uh, uh, colleagues in medical genetics. And lastly, thank you very much, and uh, uh, thank you for exploring uh, more of Taiwan's beauty. Thank you.